What's up everybody, Pat here with my good friend James Wedmore from jameswedmore.com, somebody who I'm really excited to chat with today. You know, this has been a long time coming. I've always wanted you to come on the podcast, which you should still come on the podcast okay. if you can. But we're here on the video channel because James is doing some amazing things. He also has a YouTube channel that you should follow as well. But uh, thanks for being here, James. I'm really excited, man. Thanks for having me. How did you get started with what you do? I started 10 years ago because I was a bartender. And, um, and now 10 years ago just seems so, so long. It's like lifetimes ago on the internet. But I was a bartender and I hated bartending. So I decided to create, I had this idea, I'm gonna create an online bartending school. That was the beginning of, of everything for oh, me. Oh, no way. Was how do, I, how do I teach what I know as bartending, put it into this, I had this whole vision of this online school and people could learn from home. And um, that actually was because I felt like I, I went to an actual bartending school. Mm -hmm. I paid 800 bucks in person, and I was like, that was such a rip-off, that was such a waste of money. What if I could make a more inexpensive version that people could learn from the comfort of their home? This is 2007, Yeah, and um, that started it all for me. That started a journey of like online business, the internet, social media, learning how to market, how to sell, how to scale, all of that stuff. So that was that's how I got started. So was it a blog or what kind of resource did you create to get that So like I created, so all I did is I, I made every mistake that you could possibly make. I spent the first three months creating a 222 page book with all the recipe ingredients, all of everything I had learned, a DVD, CD-ROM, like videos, yes. swipe files, all of that stuff. And I was like, okay, I got it, it's done, now what? And I was like, oh, you gotta learn how to sell, you gotta learn how to market, you gotta learn how to like put content out there, build an email list. So that, that took a whole nother journey, but actually the first sale that I made was from YouTube. So. Uh, April 18th, 2008, I get an email in my inbox saying new order was placed. And I'm like, first I thought I was broke at the time. I was living at my parents. At first I thought I had bought something and I didn't have the money. And I was like, no, ah, oh gosh. And then I look closer, cause you know, your first sale, you don't even know, never seen one before. So I look and it's someone from like San Antonio, Texas has just purchased. And at the bottom it says, how did you hear about us? And they wrote a YouTube video. No and way. a few months earlier I was messing around with YouTube, making some videos putting them up there and that's how they found me that's how they and the thing was 200 bucks like that and plus 20 dollars shipping so like mm -hmm. that was huge that was it for me i was like if i can do this once i can do this again what else and that was that was it how many months or weeks was it up before you made your first sale so november of 2007 right around thanksgiving is when i had the idea i was bartending at the time and i hated it it's actually was like listed as like considered like the 10 worst jobs to have in America because it's so grueling. It's like you have this illusion that it's this glory like Tom Cruise cocktail days right, where you're right. just like flipping bottles and then you realize that half the night is you just cleaning and dealing with drunk customers. So I hated it. I had a college degree and I had, you know, you have all these like aspirations and then you're just like, this is what I'm doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted more. So I was living at my parents and I just had the idea in November. I was like, I'm gonna get paid more to teach others how to bartend and actually bartend. That was November of 2007. By April uh, April 18, 2008, was the first sale. That was a long time. It was, and, and I like, I went to work. Like I was working six to 10 hours minimum a day, just creating the product, mm -hmm. creating the content, trying to get it out there. That's awesome. Did you know I used to bartend? I didn't know that. I did used to bartend. No way. At a macaroni grill. Yes, okay, so I bartended at the first place you could bartend at which was on the border, which is... So, like a chain restaurant. Exactly, yeah. I, I think they're owned by the same company, They, they might be. I, I usually leave out where I bartend because... Oh, yeah, me too, yeah. Okay, so we've opened up the doors here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, but the, on the border, for those of people who don't know that restaurant, is like the, it's the same company that owns Chili's, so it's like the Mexican food version of Chili's. So basically, I was a bartender, but all I was doing was pouring pre-made frozen margaritas yeah, so and, we had the and beer. Yes, we had yeah. the beer. And they're pre-made, right? It's like, oh yeah, like, oh, wow, that's you make a mean margarita. It's like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was my job. Okay, so bartending, and then, and, and, and then you made your first sale in April. I love that you remember the first sale that you made too. I remember yeah. mine as well. Yeah. Um, where did you go from there? How did you start? Like, you're known now for business uh, by design, and yeah. you, you help these amazing entrepreneurs now make millions of dollars. How did you mm -hmm. go from bartending to now what you do? Well, that's I think that's the biggest theme that I've seen in my life is like you give someone enough time. And, and just keep moving forward, like you're gonna have an evolution. And for me, it was several, uh, I, what I call the leapfrog effect, is that like one thing you're doing, like where you are right now, is the lesson you need to learn in order to prepare you for the next thing. And so in doing all the video stuff, or the bartending stuff, I was learning about all this video stuff. 
And then I started going to marketing events and conferences and people, this is 2008, and they're seeing video on the internet. And that was a big deal back then. Mm -hmm. YouTube was only like three or four years old at the time. So like, what, how are you doing this? And it looks good and it's cool. And I, I had a film background. And so I just started asking people like, well, would you like to learn more about this? And I actually remember sitting at an event and a woman is sitting next to me and I'll never forget this. She was actually sitting on this side and she was trying so hard, bless her heart, just to upload a video to YouTube. And I said, can I, can I help? And I just like, and I was like, oh, let's add this and we change this. And mm -hmm. she was just like blown away, just amazed. And I, and I just had the foresight to ask. I said, was that valuable? Did that help you? She's like, are you kidding? That was incredible. I said, is that something you would have paid for? Without a doubt. And, um, and then a few months, maybe a month or two later, I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, Lewis House, mm -hmm. and he's like, dude, we should do something together. We should create something. And uh, I was like, great, let's do something around YouTube. And we, we launched that. We launched Video Traffic Academy in- That's right, I remember that August, product. September of 2011. It did over $400,000 in sales in 30 days at a $97 price point. It's gone on to do millions of dollars since then. And it all started with this conversation. I mean, it's, it started with all kinds of things, but like having an experience of someone who got value and was like, oh, that was amazing, thank you. And so many times we take for granted what we know and our own value. And when I experienced someone going, this is incredible, I was like, oh, well maybe other people will think it's incredible. And that that led the whole thing and then that launched a career of being the video marketing guy in the industry and um, and then there was another iteration another evolution so I'm fast forwarding through a lot of time but the biggest thing for me is that I would have students and customers and we'd want to serve them we'd want to help them we want to teach them and the transformation the end result was like I made a video and for me I wanted so much more for them than mm -hmm. just to say I have a finished video it's like I want I want to I want to impact them on a deeper level, and so that's when we started um, the latest iteration, which is my podcast, uh, Mind Your Business, and and our training, Business by Design, and so that is just like about solving bigger problems for them, like how to actually grow a business and do it the right way. So I love it. Yeah. So Mind Your Pod, uh, Mind Your Business podcast. Yeah. We'll leave links to that and James's channel and everything else in the show notes. But I I, I really wanted to talk to you for the rest of this conversation about higher level mastermind. So you've been helping a lot of people yeah. and you've been doing it through courses and, and trainings. But recently, I don't know if you even know this, but I keep hearing your name from many of your mastermind students. I just pay them to say. Okay, to well then that, that's the truth. <laughs> no, but they, they, they are getting so much value out of the higher level coaching mm -hmm. programs that you do. And I'd love to know how these are structured. How do you make their experience so great, even though they're paying you now tens of thousands of dollars. A lot of money. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's not cheap to work with James mm -hmm. in that capacity, but every person that I've spoken to that's been a part of James's group has said it's been worth many times over what they've yeah. paid. So I yeah. hope that feels good because that's, I know why you do business does, is to. It does. In fact, that's, that was the first thing that I did was started a mastermind after all the video stuff. Cause I was like, I want to help more. And so I started with 12 people and those 12 people today, one person had barely hit a hundred thousand that year 18 months later they've they've got a seven-figure business I mean like people's 10x their business in two years or less in there and I'd, I'd love to give myself credit but the more humble and more I like push away the better is it just continues to get better and let me explain that so it really for me started with the, the this concept and idea I heard a long time ago that 90% of our success is environment in fact, there's a, there was a study done in the late 70s that's always fascinated me, and I forget the woman's name, I think it was like Susan Langer, you can Google this, but the short version of this is that she took senior citizens, people in their 70s and 80s, um, people that were like really frail, they had to use a walker, and she put them in a, in a compound, it, that's a, not a, the right word to use, but she created an environment for them that modeled and mimicked the time, the era in which they were at at their peak in their lives. The music was like the 50s. Um, you know, uh, they wore the clothes that they wore in their 20s. Um, the furniture, everything. Mm -hmm. And she observed their behavior and the transformations that they had in a seven day period or seven to 10 day period. And they, they looked, they felt, they moved 20 years younger. They measured wow. their, their brain activity was like, like they were, their IQ tests were higher, like everything had changed. 
and she attributed it to their environment. When mm. people start to say, I feel old, I look old, I'm out of date, I'm out of, it's not my, you know, like it, their, their body, their world reflects that. And so I started with a simple premise of what if we could create an environment that would allow for nothing but for people to, to thrive and be the best, biggest version of, them, of themselves at all times for, for 12 months, for mm. 365 days. And that's what it is. I mean, it is. It's not me. I don't have some secret answer. I don't have like, there's a missing ingredient that no one's telling you. Where I come from is if we create that environment, the reason you're not where you want to be is because you're playing small in some area. Mm. And the reason we're playing small is because there's either a doubt, a fear, or a belief, or a story that we're telling ourselves about why it's not the right timing, why I can't do it, what will happen if I do, what will happen if I don't, all of this stuff that distorts the way that we see the world, the way we see ourselves. And one of the big things I say is that how you see business and how you see your business will determine what is actually possible for you. So if you're afraid of failure, if you're afraid of rejection, if, you're, if you don't like selling, if you don't, don't want a refund, all that type of stuff that we say and worry about and resist against actually determines and affects how we show up day in and day out. And so when we start to remove that and give someone this opportunity to just like play full out, awesome, incredible stuff happens. So that's like the general overview and that's really big picture and real conceptual. We, right, can, right. we can ground that a bit more, but that's the, that's the premise, that's the idea. And so that last uh, quote that we always start with is this idea of what got you here won't get you there. That where you are right now in this moment, the, whether it's results in business, it's your current circumstances, it's who you were being, the actions you took, how you experienced li like your lens and view of the world got you to this point in time. And the reason people stay stuck is because they're using the same strategies that got them here to try and get somewhere else. So they just apply more or faster or longer or harder. And I look at the, 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 the transformation that I've had and we look at the bartending days, mm -hmm. What I didn't tell you in that story is that I got addicted to Adderall, and I don't know if you're familiar with I Adderall, but it's a legal form of speed, basically. And I would pop 20 to 40 milligrams in the morning, 7, 8 a.m., have maybe like a six-inch Subway sandwich for lunch, and work until 2 a.m. And I'm not working a fraction of that, that hard today yet making exponentially more, re I wasn't making any money at the time. Mm -hmm. And so something had to change, you know, and the same strategy that I was doing then is not what I'm doing today, but that's not how most people approach that next level in their life or that business. They're just trying to apply more effort. If I jam the peg into the square hole, uh, the square peg into the round hole even harder and go faster and go longer, maybe then I'll make, I'll finally make it, I'll reach that next level. And I just tell people that's, that's backwards. It's not working. So it sounds like what you're doing in, the, in these coaching programs is not necessarily giving people tips and mm -hmm. strategies or content. In a, in, a, in a sentence, what is it really that you're giving them? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Um, so why are people paying you? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the opposite of, it's, it's, the, it's for most people that go through those higher level programs. So they're already, the first thing to understand is to even be in that room, they're already at a certain level of success. Mm -hmm. And so what it is is to get them from that first level, you know, new, new level, new devil for everybody, it's different. Right. Starting a business has its own challenges. Scaling that business has its own challenges. Getting your life back while you scale has its own challenges. But the common theme there is it's not about giving. It's not about here's what you're not doing that we need to add on. It's the exact opposite. It's about letting go. So the analogy that I use is if we're in a car and you're going to use your car as a vehicle to go from point A to point B, what we've been trained is that if, well, if I put the pedal down faster, I'll get there quicker. Mm -hmm. If we use more of that RPM, the engine will we'll move faster, we'll, we'll go up the hill quicker, we'll get there, we'll get the results that we want. And so what I'm doing is not encouraging people to go faster or spend more effort or energy or gas, but to actually realize that we've while we're moving, we still have our foot on the brake. And we have the foot, our foot on the brake in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like the fear, the doubt, the worry, the trying to play safe, the trying to avoid risks and all of that. And we're all doing that. We're all doing that in certain ways. And so when we can start to let up the brake, stop getting in our own way, stop self-sabotage, then moving where you want to go, you can get there just a heck of a lot faster. Yeah. 
It's well, still really intangible and conceptual, but that, I mean, that's the easiest way I can, well, I can describe it. When you started this coaching program, because I'm, I'm, I'm imagining some people out there have thought about or contemplated creating higher level mastermind programs where mm -hmm. you only need to serve a small number of people, but really give them a lot. Yeah. And as already you can tell, it's not about giving them more information, but perhaps asking the right questions right. or being there for support or holding them accountable and, and those kinds of things. Um, I can imagine a lot of people considering that, but then going, you know, I, I'm not, I can't charge that much money. Mm -hmm. And I like, who am I to even do that? How do you help people break through? Like, did you, when you first did it, did you did you ever question like what am I doing here like is this am I worth that much money or can I can I even charge that amount? Well, I came from I've been a part of masterminds ever since I started. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, after that first year, after making that first sale, I joined a mastermind. So I've seen the value firsthand. I've seen how powerfully transformative it can be because if you're working one on one with someone, what happens is is you as the coach or the teacher has a certain way in which you think is the right way. And the student has a certain way that thinks it's the right way. And oftentimes it becomes a you versus them scenario. Mm -hmm. And it's like, look, if, if I say, no, no, do this, Pat, this is going to be better. This is, a, this is a, I suggest, I recommend this. And in the back of your mind, you're like, mm, no, I don't agree. Then you're just going to keep doing it the way you've been doing it. But in this mastermind format, it becomes you against like 20 other people. Mm -hmm. And if those 20 other people all want the best for you, then like, and they all want you to do this, but you don't want to, like good luck fighting 20 people, right, you know? Right. And so there is just this power of this collectiveness where um, it, it isn't me. Like there is very little coaching from me. It's me creating an environment and putting the right people in the room mm. and getting the heck out of the way. And so I never had resistance to pricing. We've raised the price, it was 20,000 when I started and now it's up to 35,000 for a year. Because the way I look at it is, if you're in a room with multiple six and seven figure earners, um, and you're in that room for people with those people for a year, what do you think that's gonna do, not just in the next 12 months, but for the rest of your business career? And hmm. I know that that's value, because I actually myself pay considerable, I pay $37,000 a year for a mastermind. And, um, it's amazing what it's done to, to push me to another level. I mean, because there's all these essential things that go into it from like the accountability, that, that's huge. But just like wanting to come to that next mastermind or that next retreat and show everyone like, here's what I did, here's what I accomplished, here's how I can help you. Mm -hmm. and, um, and everyone's just supporting each other and it's, it's pretty awesome, so. It's incredible. Yeah. How many times do you meet every year? So we do four times a year. We do okay. four, and it's about two and a half days. Everyone flies in. We do like an evening session, and then it's it's two full intense days. We do things like uh, one of my favorite things is hot seats. So you know, it's one person sitting literally in a in a hot seat, uh, asking their question, and then you have everyone else in the room that's giving their perspective, their opinions, their ideas, mm. and then I'm I'm. It's rarely me. Um, I'm just sitting there making sure that it's guided. So like, here's a great example, is if we have someone on the hot seat and they have a question and you're a member of the mastermind, it's actually far more value to you if I don't answer the question and I let you say, oh, you know what, this worked for me or here's an idea or blah, 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 mm -hmm. because now there's an experience of another member giving value and you going, wow, I just helped this person go make a ton more money and then you know, like that value and exchange, uh, exchange happens between you guys. It's not the James show, and they and they know that. So I'm like, especially as the year goes on, I pull back further and further. And mm -hmm. if, if there's something, I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you two examples. I'll give you a positive example. And I'll give you a bad example. I encourage people to do things like dream way bigger. Mm -hmm. Like even how far we're, how big we're dreaming now, and the goals that we have is limited to what we think is possible. Right. And so we tend to play small even in that arena. And so I remember there was the first year there was something where I asked people to, um, you know, share just like what would the finished vision, uh, finished version of your dream business look like? How much revenue would it generate? Stuff like that. And people were sharing big numbers, and it was awesome. And one person got up there and said something to the effect of like, "Well, I want to be real. I don't want to be unrealistic, and you know, I want something that's that's not pie in the sky type numbers. Right. And I had to like shut that down because it's like, that's not what we're doing here, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're dreaming bigger because if you would have talked to the 
kid in his popping Adderall 10 years ago and say, hey, by the way, one day you're going to have a multi-seven figure, multi-million dollar business, I'd be like, no, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm always encouraging people to do that. And then if I see someone who's trying to, you know, resist that or go against that, I, that's where I have to step in. Mm -hmm. But here's an example of how powerful even just like a hot seat conversation can be. So we had an individual and she had created a product and she had launched it and it had done really well. And she gets on her hot seat to ask a question. She goes, what should I do next? What should I launch next? And half the room started answering that question like, oh, what's the other product you have? What mm -hmm. else, are you, have you surveyed them? Like all the things that you would think would be really good advice and suggestions. And I stopped for a moment and I said, hold on, let's go back to this other product. And she shared a lot of the numbers. Like I teach my students how to like, actually look at your numbers and interpret the data. Actually, most people do not know how to interpret their numbers properly, and so they make the wrong meaning and interpretation based on what's happened. Something that they that actually did really well, they're like, this was this tanked, this sucked. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, your numbers look amazing. You've got a home run offer right here. Why go and create something else? Relaunch this one. And she did. And she took it to, you know, it was like $150,000 launch or something. She mm -hmm. took it to seven figures in the next six or seven months. Now it's, it's a multi seven figure, just that one product. Mm -hmm. And she could have, she almost went off and just focused her time and energy on another product then another product then another product and spread herself too thin. And that's one thing I noticed too, is that people reinforce the wrong types of actions and behaviors and credit the wrong actions for their success. Mm -hmm. So she thought that her success had come from creating a product. So she goes, great, I'll just create another product and that'll make, and I'll create another one and I'll create another one. I said, no, it's not coming from creating the product. It's coming from having a great offer that your audience actually wants. Mm -hmm. So we gotta get that offer in front of more people and just repeat that. And I'm a big fan of less is more. So that's a great example of a lot of people are just trying to do all the things, fill their to-do list and show everyone how busy they are and here's somebody that took one product to a million dollars in seven months. And uh, that's, I'm a big wow. fan of less is more. Well, thank you for giving us insight on some of your students and kind of what has yeah. helped them the most. I think really what the theme of these mastermind type things are is that, you know, you might have heard this quote before from Jim Rohn, that's you're the average of the five people you spend mm. most of your time with, right? Yeah. So you are creating an environment, like you said, where like-minded people can come together to yeah. learn from each other and up their average, yes. essentially. Absolutely. And, and that's the value you're providing. And, and a lot of people now at this point, if you're not already asking, are saying, well, how do you find a mastermind? And the first thing I say is I think the mastermind has to find you. Um, there are two types of masterminds. And uh, the first is one that is like a paid mastermind that someone's facilitating. And the other one is a peer-based. And this is a, it's like a catch-22 because it's something that I think everyone, if you're watching this video, just the fact that you're watching it means that you, you already know that you need one or mm -hmm. you know that it's important. It's been important in my life. And um, the tricky thing is, is what makes a mastermind great first and foremost is the quality of people in the room. And so if you're just starting out, if you're new, I mean, hey, if you can get in a room with people that are like, you know, at a much higher level, that's amazing. But we never want to be the smartest person, uh, you know, in, in the room. If you are, you're in the wrong room. Um, but what what I've seen happen as a trap for people is they're like, hey, we're all just starting out. Let's all join a mastermind. Mm -hmm. And that can be tricky because then they kind of stay stuck at that level together. Cause it's like, we're all supporting each other, but we all don't know what we're doing. Right, right. And it's great to have that support system. But then when we give each other that type of advice, it just kind of keeps us where we are. So it, it can be really tricky, but keep your eyes open. If you start connecting with people, someone in a Facebook group or, someone in a live event and just start like, hey, can we follow up? Can we mm -hmm. maybe start something? And, and look, you might, outgrow, uh, you might outgrow it in a month. You might be with a group of people. Because I know you've done peer-based as well where you just stay connected with people. And right, and those are great if you connect with the right people yes. and you do push each other. I will say I've also paid for high-level masterminds and I'm and, and, and a part of some as well. There is something to be said for having skin in the game and having put down some money. Like totally. you will do the work because you're paying for it. Yes. Absolutely, you take it seriously. So I have, I have one that I pay, and like I said, it's a, it's a lot of money, and then I have a peer-based, and it's, there, it's only three of us, and like we take it extremely serious. Like mm -hmm. there's no messing around there, and because um, it is, it's, um, it's, it's vital. I, I think it's essential, yeah. so. 
Cool, James, hey, thank you so much yeah. for coming on and sharing a little bit of kind of what's going on in there and in your business, <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. Um, always fascinated with your work and not just the video quality that he always comes out with. If you gotta check out his YouTube channel, he's got some amazing things there. Uh, and also at jameswedmore.com, you can get involved with other things uh, there at his website. But um, just thank you for coming on, I appreciate it, man. Happy to introduce you to my audience. Yeah.